Here at Gunsight, it's all about training, and its founder, Colonel Jeff Cooper, used to say you had to practice every movement and until it became part of your personality. And Bob Whaley, Range Master here at Gunsight, is going to explain what that means. Yeah, Dave. Um, I first came to Gunsight in 1989. I took my original 250 class then, and uh, Colonel Cooper was still active and teaching the classes. First thing out Monday morning, of course, he's addressing the students, telling us how things were going to work here, what our schedules was, and inevitably the question got around to training and how much you needed to train, what you needed to train. And questions were asked about how many iterations does it take, how many repetitions, blah, blah, blah. You know, that is, we, we discuss ad nauseum in this business. And Colonel Cooper made a comment that it really resonated with me. I wrote it down. I still have my original notes from that class. Hmm. Occasionally I'll refer back to them. And what he said was very enlightening to me. He said, you have to train these things until they become a part of your personality. You have no choice but to do them the way you have trained. It's like breathing in and breathing out. Hmm. You don't even think about it. Sure. So if you think about training to that level, uh, what does that mean? Well. Here it is. In a critical incident, my conscious brain is doing certain things. Mm -hmm. It's looking for bad guys. It's trying to uh, discriminate and decide, is this someone that I truly can engage with deadly force? Where's cover? Uh, where are my friends? Where are my associates? Your conscious brain is trying to work through all of that. And that's a heavy load. Let's sure. face it. That's, sure. in, in the time frames we're talking about, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. If you have to take any part of that conscious brain and break it free to decide, well, gee, now how do I draw my pistol? Uh, golly, how do I aim that pistol? How do I clear this malfunction? Uh, how do I reload my pistol? You're done. Sure. That's too much to think that the conscious brain is going to do that. You've got to train that down to a virtual uh, subconscious level. Mm -hmm. So that's happening almost by magic, but there's nothing magic about it. Yeah. First off, you have to have proper instruction uh, from an instructor who has been involved with these types of things. Uh, then you have to train, you have to practice. Yeah. And how many iterations does that take? Wow. I've read study after study after study that comes up with magical numbers. And my experience and the experience of a lot of an other instructors here at Gunsight will tell you it is an incredibly individual thing. Sure. We've had guys come out here and I've trained with guys and, and actually worked with guys in my days in the police department where you could show them something, they do it one or two times, and they got it. Mm -hmm. I hate those guys. <laughs> really, I'm not one of them, you yeah. know? Other people, it may take dozens of iterations or hundreds of iterations, or you get the guys like me, and it takes thousands of iterations. I'm sometimes a little slow on the uptake here. Um, you just got to keep plugging at it. Sure. And you have to do it perfect. You know, practice does not make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. Yep. And there's kind of two levels of training that you need to do. First off, you have to do the academic side of the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to understand in your area where you live, operate, whatever you're doing, uh, what are the rules of engagement, what are the laws that govern the use of force, not just deadly force. Sure. If you always are hung up on just deadly force, you know, other things happen. Mm -hmm. So I have to understand the law ahead of time. In the middle of a crisis, is really a bad time to be standing there wondering, hmm, boy, can I legally do this? You know, and you need to understand it to the level that, yeah, you're going to be thinking about it and considering it as your decision-making process, but that decision-making process has to be based on what you've already learned. Sure. All right? Sure. Then you get to the physical side. Now, let's think about that first level as high-order brain functions. Mm -hmm. Okay, It's kind of like doing math. It yep. takes a little while to sort through it. There's no other way to do it, but I understand ahead of time. You know, I know what 2 plus 2 is. I, I just have to do it on paper. Now. Okay. The other is kind of like low-order brain functions, You know, that last mammalian fight-or-flight survival instinct. It's kind of going to take over the physical aspects of this thing, whether we like it or not. Sure. If we've trained it up, we've given it good, solid options, and we've limited those options where we can, such as how I grip this pistol, how I run this pistol, um, it just kind of will look at that situation. It becomes and, part of your subconscious. And hyperspeed, yep. it's going to grab the right response, it's going to load it in the barrel, and it's going to fire it. Mm -hmm. And it seems like magic to you. 
sure. as your conscious brain tries to catch up. If you haven't trained that, that fast twitch, that low order portion of the brain, mm -hmm. it becomes the puppy. Yep. And it's just going to start running around in circles, barking its, its head off because it's scared and it doesn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And that's going to override. You're going to shut down or you're going to do something that's totally inappropriate that doesn't handle it. Okay, Dave, so we're going to set up a couple drills here. Uh, basically, we're going to set up an immediate action drill to respond mm -hmm. to a level one or fail to fire malfunction. And then we're going to work our way into a, an emergency or speed reload. Okay. So we'll show the viewers a little bit about how to set that up. So the first Great. thing is we have an appropriate range. We have a target that is appropriate to address with deadly fire because he's armed and he's posing an immediate ongoing and, and critical threat to us here. Sure. So let's make ready here. First off, eyes and ears. We have our eyes on. Check each other. Ears. Once again, okay, we check each other. Good to go here. I'm going to draw to a low ready. Now, remember, every time we touch that pistol, it's a training iteration, so I'm going to do it properly, working my way through all five stages of the presentation. I make a good draw here. Now, I'm drawing to a low ready to prep my pistol for this drill. So, my trigger finger is straight. Mm -hmm. My safety remains on. So, the first thing I'm going to do is bring my pistol into my workspace here. I'm going to remove this full magazine and I'm going to put it back here so I can get to it in just a minute. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come over, I rotate my chamber down, my ejection port down, and I'm going to forcefully run this slide and allow that round to fall to the ground. Now I've just executed a training iteration on how to run my slide. Touch on something real quick, I let that round fall, I didn't catch it, just in case of the off chance that it could catch a sharp edge here on the primer detonate in my hand with my hand covering the ejection port, that would be a bad thing. So I just let it fall. Now to ensure that it is unloaded, that the pistol is unloaded, I lock the slide to the rear. Okay. I visually and physically check to make sure there's no round in the chamber. Okay. Now to set up my drill, I need to download my pistol. I have an empty chamber. Yep. That's going to give me my fail to fire. Come back, re-engage my safety as I slowly and deliberately work my way back into the holster, my eyes are up maintaining situational awareness, I holster the pistol with my trigger finger straight, yep. slowly and deliberately. Okay, remember that magazine I put in my back pocket? Mm -hmm. All right, let's set it up. Since we don't want to take all day on this, I'm going to just randomly bump some rounds out of that magazine. Really don't know how many are left in there. Now as I roll through, I'm going to get my emergency reload. Okay. So I'm sure. going to get my fail to fire immediate action drill, and then mm -hmm. I'm going to get my emergency or speed reload when the slide locks to the rear. Good. I take this partial magazine, I seat it administrative, administratively into the pistol without removing the pistol from the holster. That's an administrative function. I've now set up my drill. All right. To execute the drill, I'm going to make a good draw. I'm going to present this pistol like I mean it because now I've really got a training iteration. Sure. So I draw a point in. I attempt to fire. Nothing happens. A resounding click, the second loudest sound in a gunfight. I bring the pistol into my workspace. I'm maintaining. My head is up, maintaining situational awareness. I tap the magazine mm -hmm. to ensure that it's seated. I roll the pistol ejection port down so gravity helps clear any debris in there. I forcefully run the slide to feed around into the chamber. I come back up. I maintain situational awareness with my head up so I know I should engage. I engage. The slide locks to the rear. I bring the pistol into my workspace as I access a new magazine. New magazine comes up. They pass in the air. Flat to flat. Rock it in. Seat the magazine come over the top so I get all the compression out of that spring that I can. I forcefully run the action. My head has been up maintaining situational awareness so I know I need to re-engage. I make sure he's down. I look, scan, and assess. Since my front sight broke off the target, my trigger finger is straight. Mm -hmm. I look, scan, and assess. If I had another magazine, I would execute a tack load here. Since I don't, I'm going to work my way back into the holster, reluctantly work my way back into the holster, safety on, trigger finger straight, slowly and deliberately with my trigger finger straight, reholster the pistol, stand by for the next iteration. Great. Okay. The Good line stuff. is safe. 
I can now reach down and pick up anything that I have on the ground. Excellent. So that drill, we practiced a number of things. Primarily, we practiced the level one immediate mm -hmm. action drill, malfunction reduction. We practiced a speed reload. But we also practiced a presentation or a draw stroke. We practiced flash sight picture, uh, trigger, uh, trigger press and reset. Mm -hmm. We practiced maintaining our situational awareness by keeping our head up and looking around. So often we see shooters will do what they need to do and then they get lost in the gun. They're looking at the gun like a pig looking at a wristwatch or like they're looking for the instructions on what to do with the yeah. gun. Look all day folks, it's not there. Exactly. You need to train in these drills. Now since I've maintained situational awareness, I don't have to fix the gun, then look and see what I need to do. As I'm fixing the gun, I know what I need to do. I am constantly evaluating my situation and my environment. I know already what I need to do as I'm fixing the gun because I've trained this to be a part of my personality. Sure. And I know what to do without fixating on the problem. Excellent. Now, Bob, there's you just showed two things that we can do. Right. There's lots of other things. Oh, there's, yeah. Uh, working with a partner, you can have them load dummies into your magazine so that those failure to fires don't exactly. happen right away. Exactly. Uh, that'll get that tap rolling rack. All kinds of variations you can do here. I set this up myself just now so I know when the issues are going to come up. Some variations you can do. Take your magazines, unload them, mix in some orange training rounds, plastic mm -hmm. training rounds that you can get, or inert rounds. Randomly load those in your magazines. Then, without looking, mix your magazines up. Sure. Set your gear up. Now you don't know when the problems are going to come up. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you want to have friends, uh, if you want to have fun with your, your shooting buddies, load each other's magazines. Oh, you can really mess with each other oh, that way. Uh, oh, yeah, the amount of fun you can have just, you know, messing with your buddy is unlimited there. <laughs> but have them loaded. Now, you really don't know when it's going to happen or even if it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. you know, don't always create the malfunctions sure. or the issues. Occasionally, load a full magazine. Yep. Well, if you're always expecting it, then you're always going to be prepared, but it's when it's unexpected that you have to be able to react and fix the problem. And a part of training is this. You have to have in your mind that the worst thing is going to happen. Always anticipate that this gun is going to fail. It's a mechanical device. Sure. It's just like your car, your toaster, your microwave oven, your washing machine. They are mechanical devices. At some point, they are going to fail. We just don't know when. So I have to have the education the physical training and the mindset that I expect bad things to happen. Sure. And the surprise is not that something went sideways. The surprise is that nothing went sideways. I didn't have to do, I didn't have to reduce sure. a malfunction. I didn't have to do a speed reload today. Okay. Uh, that's the mindset you get into. You get good, good instruction. You do these things, you practice them right, you practice them perfect because perfect practice makes perfect. As Colonel Cooper said, you drive these things down until they become a part of your personality. And your chances for success in a critical incident will be much better. Absolutely. And now that you know what to practice when you're at the range, head out to it and do some practicing. And if you're looking for a place to practice your shooting, visit our website. It's called wheretoshoot.org. And when you're out there, remember, firearm safety depends on you.